All right, today we're back, and what we're going to be making today is uh, oxalic acid uh, vaporizers. So for this project, we're going to need three-quarter inch uh, copper piping, the end caps that go on them. We got four. We're making two of them today, and two of these. Now, I ended up getting the stainless steel ones. Most people use the brass ones, but our place didn't have brass. We had stainless steel. So we're going to go with these today. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this pipe in four inch sections. I'd like to make a bunch of these eventually, but we're only going to make two today. Cut this in four inch sections. Put a cap on the top cap on the bottom, put one of these uh, stainless steel nipples on it, and I will show you how to do that. We will be soldering a little bit, but the soldering is not holding any joints together because you have to use a torch, like a propane torch, to get this to start vaporizing. The only thing the, the, only thing the solder is going to be used for is just to seal the gaps, so the vapor the uh, vapor doesn't leak out so it goes into the hive like it should so we'll start cutting this and putting it together all right we have our four inch sections all marked and everything uh i just used a screwdriver to mark them there's one there there's another one here i'm gonna get rid of this section because it's got the sticker on it i don't want the sticker on it and then another one right there, if you can see it. So we're gonna use a little chop saw and then cut them sections off. All right, we got our four inch sections. They don't have to be perfectly on four inches, but the closer the better. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a rasp and then we're just gonna clean this up nice and smooth. Just enough to take the burr off. And get some of the chunks out of there. And then we'll do the same to the other side. And then we'll take the other piece and do the same to that. All right, we have our two pieces prepped and just about ready. You're gonna want these end caps. You're gonna want one on each side. Now, we're not gonna just solder these into place because once you apply the torch to it, the bottom's just gonna fall out and you don't want that. So I'm gonna take some sandpaper and just rub up, rough up one side because we're only gonna be using solder on one side. Okay. And then I'll show you how to get these on. All right, so we're gonna take our end caps, put them on the end like that and all we're doing you can rest it on your little vise or whatever. You just bang this enough to make it dent, and then we'll be twisting it by hand so it's kind of like a pressed fit. You don't have to go crazy on these. And that's it. That's on there. 
would do the same thing with the other side with the other one all you're doing is disforming it just a little bit enough that you can still turn it by hand and that's it as soon as you go to twist it you'll feel when you can't move it anymore i have to do this one one more time And that's on, that ain't going anywhere. So we're gonna solder this into place to fill the gaps in here. And there we have one done. I guess it's not the prettiest soldering job, but it's just supposed to fill in the gaps for the leaks. So we're gonna do the other one. All right, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna be installing the stem. But before you do that, you're gonna wanna take one of these caps just slide it over. This is going to be your top. We're not soldering this or hammering it or nothing. You're going to want to take your top right here and take a screwdriver or pretty much anything and mark where the cap stops. That mark right there. You don't want to drill anywhere above that. You want to keep it below. So we're going to put it right around where this U is on this. This will be the top. We're good because the reason why we have the bottom so long is so it's bottom heavy so it stays in the upright position and we will get that drilled and installed. All right, so our hole, our hole is drilled. Just make sure you go through the one side, not both. Now we're going to install the, the threaded rod here. Now we're not going to bother tapping this because we're just going to use this since uh, the threads are already tapered. We're going to use this pretty much to force thread. So 3 8 inch hole is pretty close. So we're just going to take a hammer, tap this down, turn it, tap it down, turn it until it's pretty much in as far as you want to go. So we'll do that. It's going to take some coaxing to get it started. You want to try to have it as straight as you can. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but... Seems to be pretty straight in there. Try to use the pliers to try to get it a little further in. And then once you get it started, you can clamp it down in your vise. And then hand turn it the rest of the way. You don't have to get it the whole way in. You just want it tight in there. Yeah, it's threading in now. Then the top goes on and it's gonna look like that. You can pretty much put this in the entrance, like the entrance reducer, reduce it down and then do that. I have a different idea what I wanna do to my hives. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get some solder in there 
and uh, to seal up any leakage or anything, and that should be about it for the project. All right, and here they are finished. By no means am I a professional soldering guy, so don't hold that against me. But everything is airtight. All the joints are airtight. Uh, solder can take quite a bit of heat. So what we're going to do is when you fill this with uh, exolic acid and you torch it from the bottom, since we pinched it earlier, it won't come off and it shouldn't leak at all. The heat, if you're heating the bottom, it's not going to affect the solder joint at all. Solder, like I said, solder can take a, an awful lot of heat. And then you just slip the top on and off as you want to reload it. These things stay hot for a really long time. That's why I made two, so I can treat one hive, treat the other ones, let it cool down, and then that's about it. It should only take about two minutes to treat a hive with one of these. And I will be doing uh, I will be doing videos on how you use these. So, any questions or comments, let me know down below. And thanks for watching.